Hello, in this tutorial video I will show you how to paint Galaxy Falls. This is a 12 inch by 16 inch canvas that I had painted black. Okay. I am going to first go over sort of the um, outline of this painting and I use chalk to draw the basic elements. So we have a cliff at the top, a cliff in the middle, and then we have a cliff at the bottom. There's a sort of vertical line going down the middle to represent the waterfall and there's a circle for the moon. Okay, so it's actually a really easy layout if we take um, each element kind of step by step here. So what I'm gonna do, I have a white piece of chalk and you see me measuring about four fingers at the top. I'm gonna do that on both sides. So about four fingers space at the top and make a little mark. Then I'm gonna use that chalk to kind of draw a jagged line that dips down and comes right back up. So that's going to represent the top of our cliff. Okay, down the middle we have the waterfall. So I'm going to draw that next and the width doesn't have to be exact, but I'm showing you the spacing of my hand. So it's about the width of my hand with my fingers closed. So I'm going to make just kind of two estimated marks and I'm going to draw a line that goes down and kind of trumpets out. So it goes down pretty much vertically and then it um, curves out like a trumpet. Okay, so we have the top cliff and then we have the middle waterfall line. And then I'm not even going to measure, I'm just gonna kinda estimate the middle cliff. So I'm gonna draw another jagged line, but because this is nature, it's not gonna be symmetrical, so the line is gonna look kinda different on both sides, okay? And then I'm gonna, there's a, a horizontal line on the bottom that represents where the water is. So I'm just gonna kinda estimate here. Uh, two or three fingers from the bottom of the canvas and I'm going to draw this horizontal line and you see me already drawing the bottom cliff so just kind of estimate a um, bumpy line that goes right above that horizontal line okay so I'm pointing to the galaxy right now and this entire sky was done with sponge paint um, if you've seen some of my other galaxy painting tutorials I paint my galaxies with a sponge. It's just the technique that I like to use. Um, that's just uh, my style. I do the galaxies with the sponge. And um, so I'm going to start with a sponge in the color titanium white. This is actually one of my pouncer, my round pouncer sponge. And um, it's just what I happen to grab. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to kind of squeeze it and use it on its side here. Um, and with the titanium white, I am going to sponge in a representation of the Milky Way. So it's kind of this diagonal line thing going on and it's not perfectly straight. It's kind of jagged and curved. And then I'm going to sponge in some other random clusters of this white. So um, I'm sponging and I'm not letting that white be consistent. It's kind of um, pressing harder in some areas, kind of light in others to make it look dimmer and then brighter in others. And it's really kind of random. I'm not thinking geometry here. I'm not trying to make a pattern. I'm just trying to paint the sky. And the sky is very random. There's no patterns besides the little constellations. Okay, so um, dioxazine purple is the next color that I am loading on my sponge. And I'm gonna find a clean area of the sponge and dip it in the dioxazine purple. So it's not touching the white on my sponge, it's on a different area. And um, I am going to sponge this dioxazine purple uh, really close to that diagonal line, but I'm gonna keep the very center of that line white so it looks brightest in the center, okay? So you can see me sponging the area. That purple that goes over the white makes it look kind of like a bright purple. And then I'm gonna um, sponge it in some other random areas. So uh, I'm gonna sponge it over here kind of randomly and then over here. Some areas I'm putting the dioxazine purple over the black 
and you can't really see it, but it does make a difference. It does show up in real life. It's kind of hard to pick it up on the camera there, uh, but you can definitely see it, the parts where it kind of goes over the white. I don't want to cover all the white because I want um, some areas that are really, really bright, some areas that are more dim and just a lot of color ver variety here. Okay, um, if you twist the sponge, it kind of makes a different effect. So you could kind of do some variety in your sponging technique. So it's not all the same. Some you're pressing hard, pressing light, twisting, do different kinds of styles there. Okay, so the next color I'm going to load is ultramarine blue. I'm using um, so far just the blue and purple in my galaxy. I'm going to kind of make this simple. Um, some of my other galaxy tutorials are a bit more complex. This one I'm kind of simplifying because that's just one part of this painting. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with that ultramarine blue that I did with the purple, but make it in different areas. Again, I want to keep that diagonal line pretty bright, but I kind of like it how that blue goes over that white. It makes it look like this bright blue. Okay, so I'm doing some twisting and sponging and different stamping. I'm sponging it on the black area too and just pretty much kind of random. Okay, so you can kind of see there, it's starting to look like a galaxy. So then I'm gonna do the Mars black. Now I like to go back over what I did with a little bit of Mars black, not going crazy because I don't wanna color, um, cover up what I just did. But uh, this helps to kind of dim some areas in the sky. It also gives depth. So when I sponge black over black, so my um, canvas is a matte black that I painted with, and this is a satin black. So, um, it gives more depth in the sky. It's very subtle, but you do notice it. It makes a difference. Okay, so I'm just kind of twisting and sponging and and then um, when you are done with those colors, you can decide to go back and say, okay, well maybe I want to add a little bit of a different color somewhere else. So you'll see me doing that here in just a second. So I went back and I grabbed um, some more white and I'm just sponging very gently some areas of white, just a few specks here and there. Maybe that'll be like the base layer of a bright star that I'm gonna do with uh, my paint pen later. but. It also helps kind of blend the colors. You don't really want to overdo it. It's not like, it's not the main focus of the painting, so it doesn't have to be a perfect galaxy, but it is a galaxy. So we're not going too overly detailed here, but we're still doing the same kind of galaxy technique, if that makes sense. Okay, so this is the magical part of the galaxy painting is when uh, we do the splatter stars. And no matter what you did with your background, um, just now, this is going to make it look um, a lot more galaxy-ish. So um, I dipped my toothbrush in the white and I am splattering. And you want to make sure before you do the splatter that you kind of test it out because if your white is too thick, it's not going to give you a lot of splatter. But if it's too thin, it's going to be a drippy mess and you're going to be frustrated. So make sure you test out the consistency before you do the splatter, okay? And then after the toothbrush splatter, um, I have a white paint pen, and this just gives that extra sort of touch in there because we have some stars that are brighter and larger, and I'm putting those especially on areas um, that have kind of clusters of that white sponge paint to make it look like they're kind of glowing. So that gives an extra um, unique touch to this starry sky. So, um, and when you do stars, you always wanna paint them in random clusters. It's not geometric unless you're painting like a constellation. So we're not putting them in um, perfectly ordered rows and columns. It's very clustered, very random. All right, so it's kinda hard not to go crazy here with the stars, but eventually you're gonna have to tell yourself to stop and go on to the next step. Adding a few more final stars in there. Okay, 
so there is my galaxy. You can kind of see in the light um, the areas that are kind of sponged on the black that you don't really see, but it gives depth to the painting. So my lighting's kind of picking that up as I um, turn my canvas different ways. And next we're going to go on to the cliffs. Okay, so uh, we're going to work our way down this painting. We started at the top and we're going to work our way down. So um, I need a 12 flat brush and the color raw umber and titanium white on my palette. I'm going to start with raw umber and dip my brush in raw umber. And I'm going to outline the top of that cliff. So this is my flat brush and I'm using the tip of my brush to outline the top of the cliff. I'm pretty much just defining that line there because that chalk is um, not permanent. So I'm using the paint to outline it. Okay, and then I am doing these whole, um, vertical strokes using the full width of my brush and I'm dragging these strokes down vertically. And um, this is the type of stroke that I'm gonna do all throughout these cliff, these little short vertical strokes using the width of my brush so stroking vertical and we're not um, painting this entire cliff in in fact I'm gonna dip my brush in white here because um, that brown's not showing up so I dipped it in the white and I'm gonna kind of um, re-outline this here and you'll see what's happening so that white double loaded is making a lighter brown and uh, what I want to happen is I want the cliff to be lightest at the top and darkest at the bottom so that uh, we have um, we can see the different layers of the cliffs, the top, middle, and bottom cliff, but also it gives the cliff some depth and dimension. So um, I'm doing the same kind of stroke with that double load white and, um, yeah, white and brown, and I'm doing the little vertical strokes and I'm stroking down. So uh, lightest at the top, um, kind of uh, medium-ish in the middle and then we want to leave the bottom black so I'm not painting all the way down to the next cliff I'm leaving a lot of um, the area on towards the bottom black okay so I'm going to do the same thing on the left outline it with the double load brown and white um, um, drag your stroke down it the colors blend on the canvas there and then just kind of keep dragging them down in these short vertical sort of um, uneven strokes and then remember that we're not going for realism here we're creating an impression of the cliff so don't get frustrated that it doesn't look like a real cliff it's also at night so our lighting could be um, our lighting's actually coming from the moon here but uh, it doesn't have to be perfect okay so I'm just going over this little bottom area with a little bit more of the raw umber. And then I am going to go on to the next cliff and I'm just going to go ahead and start with the double load of the white and the brown. I know for the top cliffs I started with pure brown, but now I'm just going to start with the white and brown. So I dipped my brush in both the white and brown. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to outline the top so it's nice and light and light brown at the top and then I'm dragging my stroke down okay um forgot to mention before i started this whole cliff step that i did not dip my brush in any water and you don't see me dipping my brush back in in any water because i uh want to keep that paint pretty dry almost like a dry brush technique only i'm not um, drying my brush off to make it look feathery but I'm not dipping it in water either so that kind of makes a difference in this sort of technique that I'm doing so there's no water on my brush and I'm not dipping it back in water either I'm just loading it back in the paint so the white double load the white and the brown so I'm doing the same little short vertical strokes and making it dark on the bottom keeping it black on the bottom and then you can go on to the bottom cliffs as well doing this exact same technique outline the top vertical strokes keep the bottom black okay 
And then when I'm done with this step in, you'll be able to do, do it too if you choose to. I'm going to go back with some Mars Black and kind of uh, define the bottom areas of those cliffs to make it just a little bit darker. And um, you can do that as well. And it'll help, especially since that brown is going to still be wet, it'll help kind of blend the bottom area to make it look like it's a little darker and gives it nice contrast against the brown. So we really see the, the levels of the cliffs here. So I'm just going back with my brush and kind of blending it in. With um, just the pure brown, so I was blending it in with the pure brown towards the bottom just to make it look a tad darker on the bottom there. And then I'm going to now grab some of that Mars Black. Freshen up your black, especially since you haven't used it since we did the sky there. So add just a little bit more black to your palette. And um, just a little bit on the brush, not a lot, because Mars Black takes over so fast if you add way too much to your brush. So just a tiny bit on the tip there. And I'm just kind of gently brushing the bottom areas of the cliffs to make that area a tad darker and um, using the full width of the brush stroking up to do wet on wet blending over the paint that's already wet there so it blends with the kind of pure brown that's in the middle so i did that to all three levels of the cliffs Okay, so this next step is the waterfall. This is the, um, the best part of the painting, I think, because we get to use this fun fan brush. Um, I do not remember the number on this brush, but I will get that number for you and put that in little subscripts. Um, but I am going to double load the fan brush in cobalt teal hue and titanium white. And I'm going to stroke using the full width of the fan brush, um, almost like, I don't know why this reminds me of combing someone's hair, combing your own hair, but it does. For some strange reason, that's what it reminds me of. But you're just gently brushing the waterfall to create this technique and those colors are blending together that teal and that white combo is blending together to make this very pretty waterfall and I'm only brushing vertically staying in that area of course the area that I drew for the waterfall and you can turn the fan brush on its side vertically to uh, you saw me do that earlier to outline the edges of that waterfall you can turn it on its side to do that but pretty much, see so you can turn it on its side, just like that to define the left and right sides. But in the middle area, you're using the full width. And we're not coloring this 100% solid. We are leaving black areas showing through because that um, it makes it look like there's some waterfall texture with that black showing through. Okay, so now, um, I'm gonna, I switched to the 12 flat, so I'm not using the fan brush anymore, and I'm using the 12 flat brush, and I dipped it in just titanium white, pure titanium white, and I outlined that top part of the cliff, and I'm painting these um, very bold 
um, solid white strokes, vertical strokes at the top because the top of this waterfall is very pure white because that water is falling down. There's a lot of energy up there where that water is falling down. It is very white up there. And also outlining that top line right there that goes over the cliff, it shows you that that water is going over the cliff. So that's how you create that effect. Um, so when you use the tip of your brush to kind of outline that the line that we drew with the top cliff, okay? So the bottom part of the waterfall, this is super fun where you get to express all your emotions down here in that one little contained area. So you're doing these short, jagged strokes that are going in all different directions, just at the very bottom because this is the, the splash at the bottom, the part where the waterfall is hitting the water and there's a lot of energy going on down there. So you need to be using a lot of energy right now in these little strokes. They are going in all different directions. Put on a crazy song and um, just don't even think about what you're doing. Some um, doing some dry brush stroking that are that's going kind of diagonally to make it look like the splash is going against the cliff um it's inconsistent the strokes are going in all different directions okay and then so that's actually my first layer of the splash. I'm gonna add another layer of splash, but what I did was I jumped to the actual water. So I dipped my brush, I didn't rinse my brush off at all. I still had white on my brush. I dipped it in cobalt teal hue, and I'm doing horizontal strokes now to kind of paint the water. So don't get um, too detailed with this water. It's actually not even the focus of this painting here, but there's water down there with a little bit of white in there too. So just horizontal lines, leave a lot of black still showing through because those black lines will make it look like there's water texture with the lines that are still showing through, okay? So now I'm gonna rinse my brush off again and I'm gonna add pure white and I'm gonna do another layer of these splashes. So that first layer was kind of dry and sort of translucent. Now I'm gonna add pure white. So now it's gonna be very opaque because I'm adding another layer on top of that splash. So again, I'm doing the same thing. A lot of expression in these strokes. Very short strokes, but they're, um, there's a lot of energy in my hand right now. It's going everywhere and you're just um, painting a splash. That's <laughs> it's not a lot that I can describe about it. So, and then maybe a little bit's kind of um, going into that water there. So I'm doing a, a few little tiny horizontal strokes that go with the water, kind of flows into the water area. And uh, so my hand's moving really fast as I'm making these strokes. And then maybe I'll go back up with a little bit of white. You don't really want to overdo it though because we don't want our waterfall to be, the part, the vertical part of the waterfall to be opaque. Okay, so now we are at the next step. And um, so I'm gonna do the moon and you see me holding a theater, a movie theater cup. Um, it said 2012 on it actually, um, but this is like a 16 ounce size plastic cup and so I'm using it as a circle to trace the circle for the moon and the moon is rising just over the mountain there on the right and I'm going to paint the moon next. So um, the colors that I need for the moon are titanium white and ultramarine blue and a 12 flat. So I actually consider this part to be the second half of this painting um, and I will explain why in just a second but let me explain to you what I'm doing here. Um, so I'm dipping my brush in ultramarine blue and a little bit of titanium white and I'm going to do these short strokes that are going vertically. Okay um, and actually they start out kind of vertically but they end up kind of going in different directions to kind of all sorts of directions. And I'm painting this moon in a way that the blue is more blue and dark at the bottom, but it's going to slowly fade to pure white at the top. So we have a shadow at the bottom of the moon, just where the cliff is, and then it turns to pure white. So as I load my brush, um, to as I work my way up, 
I want to have less blue and more white. So actually what I just did was I loaded my brush in just pure blue just to make the bottom part just a little bit more pure bluer. But now I'm loading it in white and I'm doing wet on wet blending. So I'm blending that blue with the white and working my way up with these little tiny short strokes that are kind of going in different directions. And when you make your strokes go in different directions like that, not only does it help it blend, but it also creates moon texture, the impression of moon texture. We're not going for a realistic looking moon here. So we're not doing the craters or the man on the moon shadow or anything like that. But I am still working my way up and at the top, maybe the direction of the strokes kind of curve with the circle to make it look more like a circle or a globe. And then, so uh, my strokes are kind of kind of contour right there. See how they curve with the circle at the top to create that shape. And then I'm just gonna keep working my way up. And now I'm at the top and it's brightest at the top and more pure white at the top. And then I'm gonna go back down and just maybe kind of blend in the moon a little bit more. Maybe outline it with the tip. And then I'm gonna go in and um, blend it. And then you could always load your brush back into ultramarine blue if um, your white kind of took over and it's not blending. So just add a little bit of blue to your brush and um, just adding just a tiny bit of paint. It helps when you don't load your brush with too much paint because that makes it too thick and it makes it take over. So I'm loading my brush with just a teeny tiny dot of paint as I did that. And then you just kind of gently paint over with different strokes going in kind of different directions and it creates the the moon texture okay and then um i always like to outline my moons uh, for some reason it not only does it define the shape so if you paint it outside the lines of the circle this is where you could redeem yourself but also it kind of makes the moon like it look like it's glowing on the outside because it should be brightest on the outside of the the outline of the moon. So I am using that white paint pen to outline the moon. So um, I did mention earlier, this is part two of the painting. You don't have to do the moon in the trees. You can leave your painting with just the galaxy and just the waterfall, um, especially if you're doing this like as a paint party and you wanna simplify it and you don't wanna add all the extra tiny little details because the moon, moons and trees are a little kind of a medium sort of um, past first painting beginner style um, because it, especially trees for some reason we get frustrated with the trees um, but if you like the moon and the trees then go ahead and try it so that's why I consider this kind of part two because it's extra stuff that we are adding to this painting okay so next I'm going to do the trees and I'm going to go back to my 12 flat brush and I'm going to double load meaning I'm going to dip it in two colors I'm going to dip it in black and raw umber and I'm gonna use the tip of my brush and I'm kind of practicing that line I'm gonna do on my palette. That's what you see me doing there. I know it's not really visible on the camera, um, but I'm using the tip of my brush to paint vertical lines. So I'm drawing the trunks of these trees first, painting the trunks of the trees first. I'm painting vertical lines. I'm gonna do three vertical lines. And these trees look stunning in front of that moon. They look, they stand out. Um, very well. The other trees in this painting don't really pop or show up, but I did them anyway. Um, so I did the three vertical lines, kind of different um, heights in there with the raw umber Mars black on my, on my um, flat brush. And then I'm going to do three lines on the left and these do not show up on the camera here. I see them in person, but um, the lighting did not pick up what I'm doing here. So you kind of see them, you kind of don't because that sky is so dark there. So I did three vertical lines and I am going to do the large vertical line that represents that large tree that's on the left side of this painting. And I am loading my brush in white raw umber and uh, Mars black. So I'm kind of making, the, it kind of makes a grayish sort of um, color. And I'm gonna start using the full width of my brush. So I'm on the bottom of the clip and I am painting up. And as I paint up, I'm twisting my brush to make that trunk get thinner. 
Okay, I'm actually going to add just a little bit of water into that to make it flow a little bit better. Add just a bit more white in there. So use the full width of the brush to make the chunk wider at the bottom and twist up. When you twist the brush, the stroke goes to a point and it gets thinner. Okay, for the pine needles of the tree, um, now I usually do this with a fan brush. I'm doing this with a flat brush here because these trees that are at the top of the cliff are tiny and it's kind of hard to control the fan brush when you have these little tiny trees. So this is just hooker's green, just pure hooker's green, clean brush, clean 12 flat brush. I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna stamp. I'm using the tip of the brush, holding my brush vertically and I'm stamping. So stamp, 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 going in a zigzag motion, left and right zigzag, as you zigzag down. So stamp, 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 left and right, zigging, zagging down, and your tree gets whiter. So it's, it forms a triangle, okay? So you're gonna leave it like that, that looks great. Um, but I am gonna go in and add um, some more colors in there. So I'm gonna tip my brush, um, in a little bit of Mars black to uh, make that just a little darker there. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So stamp, stamp, stamp. And that black, that tiny bit of black mixed with the green kind of gives it a layer of this dark green. So I'm just barely tapping it. Not a lot of black, just kind of barely tap, tap, tap. Just like how um, Bob Ross did his trees. So we're painting happy trees right now. Okay. And um, these are far away, so we don't have to worry about them looking realistic. They're way up there on the cliff. They look great against that moon. And then, so we're gonna go on to the other trees. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna start with hooker's green. And I'm gonna do the same technique. So stamping left and right in a zigzag motion and your tree gets whiter at the bottom as it goes down. And so this is kind of a problem area because we don't have that bright moon that's allowing them to show. We just have that dark galaxies guys. So they're not really showing up here and I'll show you something that you could do to kind of tweak that idea. Um, so if you want those trees to show up right there, like I did, I was determined to have trees show up there. Um, then I'll show you what you can do, but I'm, I'm doing the base layer first with just the hooker's green. And I went back with a little bit of black. So I did the exact same thing that I did on the right side, only it's not showing up because there's no moon behind there. Okay. So for the big tree, you are doing the exact same thing only on a larger scale. So it's a lot of stamping, a lot of trusting yourself. So you, this is just the hooker screen. I didn't rinse my brush off, so there's a little bit of black still on my brush there, which is fine. And I am stamping, going in left and right, um, zigzag um, motion. And my tree is getting whiter as it goes to the bottom. So it forms the triangle shape. And then I can work my way and add another layer in there. Stamping, I'm doing the, the black mixed with the hooker's green now. So I'm starting at the top, stamping left and right, left and right. Filling that um, tree in, get, make it bushier. The more stamps you do, the more fuller your tree is gonna look. So that tree also doesn't have a lot of contrast. The background behind it is that dark brown and the sky is not really showing up. And I am going to show you something that you can kind of do to tweak that. So there it is. We have dark trees. We're almost done with this painting, but we want those trees on the left to show up. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm going to mix white with hooker's green to make a light green.
and you see me rinsing my brush off completely there. I'm going to get all that black and green off of my brush. Okay. And so on my palette, I'm going to um, grab some white and some hooker's green. And my palette is a big hot mess right now, but I found an area where I can mix green and white together. And so I'm going to do the same thing. So that green and white kind of test it out. If it's too much white, it's going to look like snow. And we don't want snow on our trees, but um, just the right amount just to get that green to be a bit lighter. So mine right there, a little too much white. So I went back in and added just a little bit more green um, and just kind of stamp it. So using the tip of the brush, using the same technique, just to kind of sponge it on there, left and right strokes, and especially on the larger tree. So I'm not um, covering it all up. It's just adding an extra kind of um, lighter layer to the tree. So it, it shows a little bit better than it was before. Okay, so I'm not going to do that on the trees that are against the moon because those have enough contrast uh, where they don't need that white. Um, they're kind of shadowy trees that are in front of the moon. So I'm not going to do that there, but I had, I did do it to the, the trees. And the, the third tree that kind of got covered by that the big tree, the third tree that's on the top of the cliff. So... Um, What I am doing next is totally optional, but it's just something that kind of popped in my head. Just kind of going back and adding just a little hint of tree trunk. A very subtle thing that you can do, but maybe there's a bit of tree trunk that's showing through some of these branches here. So this tutorial has come to its conclusion. I am done with this painting. And there it is. I'm going to kind of twist it or hold it in different directions so the light can kind of pick up because it's such a dark painting. But um, super fun and super relaxing. I hope you enjoyed painting Galaxy Falls with me. Thank you for watching.